Ladies and girls, boys and gentlemen, children of communicative futures. We have had another series of visits from the drop-off ferry, but I'm only going to deal with one right here in this video. And you know what that one is? It comes in a plain brown wrapper. Oh yeah. Like those old things you used to order from the magazines back in the day, day, day. If you're of a certain age, of course. You millennials will have no idea what I'm talking about. You gotta be at least Gen X to know what I'm saying. However, in this case, it's not a naughty thing and it's not made of latex, hopefully. Maybe some parts are, I don't know. I didn't look at that hard, and I, I didn't look that hard to be honest with you, and I haven't opened the box yet, so what do I know? Just making up bullshit sitting there behind a white table on the fucking shirt with a collar on it, so you're listening to me. Who knows what I'm saying? Okay, what we have, though, is a head-based communication device. Two-way, by the way. And I'm very happy to see it arrive. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the EPOS Plus Drop, and the only EPOS Plus Drop, headset. It is the PC38X. See. There was a Sennheiser. There was another Sennheiser. Actually, two. And there is a Sennheiser plus drop version of this. And then you're going to look at me like, okay, I know who Sennheiser is, but who's Epos and why are you talking about it? Because uh, you're some dumb right now, and I've not heard of these people. Okay, so Epos is a company that was, or I, I don't know, the love child, the sort of company arm birth baby of a company called DeMont who specializes in uh, devices for assistance, like things like head, uh, um, um, ear aids, hearing aids, uh, uh, communications devices, these kinds of things. They're assistance devices predominantly, and they're very science-based. Um, Sennheiser, we all know who they are. They're, they're, they're the audiophile guys. They're the, you know, the, the 800s, the 600s. Everybody knows, the, the, you know, the, as, as, the, as the guy with the funny green tablet says, the 600s, the hondos, you know? That, those guys are that. And together, they're going to, the, they're making this company EPOS, and I have no idea what that means. I'm gonna look it up someday, I swear to God. Put it in the thing, in the doobly-doo if you know what I'm diddly diddly. Um, so, we're going to, say that they are the nerdy science portion of them because they, 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 they're, they're for like technology companies and like pro gamers, it's their gaming line basically. For anybody who's watching this, it's gonna be their gaming line or their, their, their response to like the sort of, you know, the, the, the thing you put in the middle of the conference table and everybody can hear and talk, those kinds of, you know, they're, they're called boundary mics. I do know what they're called. I do work in, I have worked in theater. Um, but yeah, they're gonna use, do boundary mics. They're gonna do all these, these two-way communications devices. That's what I'm guessing. And that, is why this has both a speaker set and a microphone. Ooh, special. Okay, so that's that's gonna be the EPOS thing. Now, the reason I bought the EPOS ones, honestly, is because they were black instead of black and yellow like a bumblebee. And then after I ordered them, I kinda wished I got the yellow ones. So, I don't know, who knows? Maybe the wife will steal these and then I'll have to I'll just be forced to get the bumblebees and we can trade off when, when I don't feel, you know, there's a stealth mode. Cause you know when you're DJing, it's weird. You don't want people looking right at your head and you want the, the, the headphones to kind of deal. And you know, why would you DJ with headphones when you wear thing? Because I like the thing, I don't give them, yeah, just put it up and I don't care, that's why. Cause I'm a nerd and they, and they sound good and I can, I can hear through it cause they have open backs. I can hear through them to monitors or people going, hey, play this song that no one wants to hear right now because it's my birthday and yeah, yeah. And I can go, okay, I'm gonna, but I have to see if I can get around to that because it won't match what I'm playing right now. And then hopefully they just forget because they're drunk as, you know. So that's, you know, that's that's kind of what you want to do when, you, when you're on a gig. But you, far be it for me for telling all the DJ secrets. The DJ, the, I'll, I'll get kicked out of the DJ compendium if I give you all of them, but that's pretty much what we do. Yeah, don't, when, when you're at a country western gig, do not ask for, you, you know, your Doja Cat song, just nobody cares. Nobody, nobody cares. I don't care how drunk you are, nobody cares. I'm, I don't get paid by you. If I play the thing that the club owner doesn't want me to play, he doesn't want to pay me or hire me the next time. So guess what? Your song will get played if it fits. If it does not, you will get nodded at and go, I, 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 even if I can hear you perfectly, I don't care. I'll go, I, 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 I. And, and, and then, you know, I'll say, yeah, yeah great, man. Oh, I, yeah. And, and I won't, I'll say things that mean I, I'm trying to communicate with you, but I'm not. You know what I mean? 
and 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 that's mostly because I'm an autistic dick, and you know you, you can sue me for that. I don't care. You know the, the you know the, the the AU Foundation is not going to take away my last two letters. I I promise you, I'm in with the the, the guy on the head. I'm not the guy on the head, but I'm in with him. He likes me. That's been for a while actually. But but the autistic community, you know, some of them love me. But we're all autistic, so you know we're going to go like this all the time. Okay. What's in the box, Jimmy? What's in the box? Sadly, friend not required because this is drop. And they do what I like. Simple packaging, it's all you need. It's not easy to get into though. Oh, yeah. oh my. There we go. It was actually a lot easier. So when I pulled it less, it was easier to move. When I pulled hard, it wouldn't move. When I relaxed, as I relaxed, it came. And I'm like, oh my God. Oh, oh, look at that. Oh, oh. One piece of polystyrene mesh. This is just, just a polystyrene web. Let's call it that. Uh, and we got the bag with another piece of polystyrene inside the bag. Actually, I think that might be a polystyrene bag within the bag. More later about that. The famous drop with the plus bag which is really just a really, really fancy bed sheet or a pair of underwear, depending on how you roll. Nah, I'm saying. Nah, nah, nah. You might not know what I'm saying. We have an awards ceremony, ceremony for your action figures in waiting, right there. You can just, you know, little podium there. That's nice. We have bonus. Springy is the only way to describe these uh, these uh, head pads here. We have that's a cable, by the way. If you need me to say it, I guess I'm supposed to say it. I'm here making a video. It is audio visual, but you know. And then you have a packet of books and shit. You can pluck them all at the same time and file them to the to the down to the to the front. File them to the front. I guess that's the front. And then we have a welcome notice. If you notice, you're welcome. You're welcome. If anybody knows the professional wrestler who used to say that, put it in the bottom. The guy's a genius, he's amazing. He's still actually doing stuff too and he's hilarious all the time. Welcome, enjoy the best of two of Epos's leading open back gaming headsets. The PC38X combines the clarity and immersion of the PC37X with the impressive deep bass of the GSP500. Is that George St. Pierre? Never know. I didn't know he was designing audio products. This has been achieved by using a custom design driver, which implements a heavier voice coil to deliver impressively deep bass for an open back design, as well as a careful tuning to deliver rich and immersive sound experience. The frequency response of the PC-8X is compared to the PC-30X below. And now for the pièce de résistance. My wife hates when I speak in French. She hates that I corny it up every single time. And eventually I'm gonna actually have to learn to speak French because like next year I have to go meet her whole damn family and like it's a wedding, it's not ours, but blah. It's just this whole thing. And you know, I'm gonna have to do far better than the single year of American high school French that I had where you know I learned phrases involving cars and bicycles and pieces of paper and the difference between the library and the bookstore and how to purchase things, that's, no, no, this is not sufficient to actually have a conversation on global events with people who actually speak the goddamn language. So I'm gonna have to learn to mumble a lot more and enunciate a lot less, because I swear to God, French is just like Latin with mumbling, but that's, I'm, I digress. Once again, I digress, I digress. In the silky bag, the silky sack, what have we? We got a Mayway. Clear off the counters, because we're going to make some love tonight. Oh, baby. Wrap it up for your protection. You know you got to. You know you want to. Let me. Unwrap that dongle, baby. All right. 
oh, I'm going, oh, look at that. It's extra tight for your protection. You know how I like it, Sennheiser. Yes, you do. This is actually trolling me. I'm gonna actually actually get, I'm gonna get Cuddy out. Don't make me call Cuddy. You all wrapped up? Call Cuddy. Okay. Now, there is a rubber to this that bicycle handlebars would be happy to have. This has a texture of, I'm just gonna say it, like it, this is defensive equipment here. This is a, a protective device and it's only from here to here and it's flexible. So you can mildly adjust if it's in your face, out of your face, and that would help you adjust your volume on the other end or the way it's received. Now, if you, if we can hear, let's see. You, this click means it's off, the mute, the, the, the mic is muted. So all you gotta do, if you're, if you're blah, 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 mute. So you can hear your teammates and not yourself, not yourself breathing, any of that. Or if you wanna be stealthy, for whatever reason, you can turn that right off. And that kills all the signal. There's a definite amount of space. I'm gonna turn these around. There's a great amount of space in here. But if you notice when the mic is up, less on the side of the mic. So that's a bit of a, you know, I mean, it's just physics there, but at the end of the day, if I did this, you're doing okay. You're doing okay here. These are super understated. And if you're into the, that all black, every all matte black, everything, all black, everything sort of style, you know, you know, these are Marcus's favorite headphones right now. These are MK, you know, these is HDs is just loving these. So MKBHD, where have you at? I'm sure you have a pair of these already. I don't need to tell you. And we have a gentle amount of memory foam here is what I would call it. I'm a little worried about the long term. I would think that long term you would want a little bit more, but I can't, it, you know, you can't tell how that's gonna, ha that's gonna, that's gonna fan out um, long term, but it feels like, because this portion, how do I switch this? This portion here is a bit, like this is hard. This is re relatively rough. So I think if this goes to a certain point, you're gonna be putting, you know, basically just rubber on your head but I don't, I can't swear to that, and I don't know if this, I can't tell if it comes apart very easily yet, as I haven't even adjusted them, which I'm about to do now. Okay, we have a lot of clicks happening here. That's for all you Rocket fans, you know, shout out to Herbie Hancock. So we have um, your EPOS branding here. It is this kind of 8-bit, I don't know if you can see it, it is this kind of 8-bit fusion of a letter and a Minecraft theme. <laughs> uh, right here, it's a, it's a shiny bit on a matte bit. That's all you're really gonna get. But it's got that gaming sort of, you know, influence on their branding. And then it has, you have it on both sides, by the way. And on the top, you're gonna have this drop plus epos branding on your forehead. And, uh, well, on your mid head if you're me, because I don't wear mine forward. Um, and then the actual product label, 38X, and then here you have your quality control thing for some reason. I don't know why they felt that we need to mold that, but maybe it's legal. I have no idea. Um, we have the control volume is a physical dial. It's very smooth in its action, but I like that it's a dial and not a touchy thingy, blah, blah, blah. You have to move it to adjust it. It's not, because all the time when you're gaming, you put your hand on your head, you reach, you know what I mean, you take your hand, you know, somebody's in the room, your wife comes in, ah, what, your mom, whatever it is, you come in and then you touch. And if I can touch this and not touch this, and not adjust my volume, and not change my settings, I can survive if I'm in a firefight when I also have to communicate. So, gaming oriented, gaming friendly. Now, why did Jim order these? Because you never hear Jim talk about gaming. Because typically, I'm a giant man monster, and if I want a game, I'm gonna put my game on the speakers in the room, and everyone in the house is gonna hear them. If they don't like it, we can fight, and I'm still the best fighter in my house. 
for a while. Well, you know, it's going to take me a decade or two to lose that title. So, why? Because these are also touted to be audiophile quality open back headphones. And you know Big Jimmy loves himself a multi-use tool. Yes, I do. Oh, yes, I do. So what? I can be walking around with these, do this, be ignoring people as if I'm on in my own world, even though I ain't got nothing on, and get a phone call while I'm at the gym? Come on, folks. I'm doing that. You know I'm doing all that. Now, the headphones themselves, the comfort level, the ear cups are a bit small. So you're going to have to wiggle it a little bit, just a little bit. Y'all going to half wiggle it. But I got my ears in them. It took me a second. I got to pull them forward and push them back, and then they're inside. But if I put them right down, if I pull, like, I can feel my ears, the backs of my ears going floop, floop, when I pull them off. So I got to get them in and pull them out. So they're not huge, but you see the deep oval on this. These are not your bare dynamics. These are an oval shape. These are the Sennheiser oval. You have to see that you're going to have to adjust these every time you put your head on, you take them off, you're going to have to adjust them again to put them on right. If I just let them like this, they're basically just over the ears for me. Now, I am a giant person. So a smaller person, your mileage may vary, not just making it making a, per, a, a personal understanding. But when I pull, push them back like this, actually, I would want to put these on like this every single time. As long as I do that and set them to the side, the part that would sit on my ears in the front sits right in front of my pinna, right on that nerve, and it feels amazing. And you know what we gotta do now. Because they're hooked in, they ain't going nowhere, not on me. And uh, There's not a lot of clamping for us, honestly, but they just sit very well on where, you're, on where your head is. Like they're not, you know, and I don't honestly feel, they're very light, so I don't feel a lot of force coming down, down force from the top. You know where we're going now. To the device! Now, to go to the device, because these are so well made, I'm going to have to plug them in. And for that, I'm going to have to wrap this. I usually just wrap. I don't know how to unwrap. Just say the words backwards? I have no idea. But we have a selection of cables. We have... Ooh, they're braided. Very nice. Braided. You got the good L. And rubberized L. I mean, not the, not, you know, it's not steel or anything, but it's, it's, it's tough. It's going to stay there for a while. And then we have a longer and split end cable. So you have the old PC style where you have the input, output, so you can plug it right into your computer. Again, they're branded for that. And then this side goes into your, into your headphones. So that is definitely designed for multi-uses. And, you know, there's plenty of things that you can do to conjoin this at some point and, you know, make them twins. We are Siamese, if you please. We are Siamese, if you don't, please. That's a very old reference, you know. Disney was a lot less uh, PC back in the day, um, well, as was everyone. So we're going to try to insert the dingus. Ooh, the depth of insertion is adequate. So now we are armed. Up, go back, and then go forward. Set them on. Oh, they sit right. Yeah, they, these sit really, as small as they seem when I'm going at them. They really do sit very well on my head. Now, the question is, are my ears, my ears, my giant ears, too close to the drivers? <laughs> That's why we go to the device. So, my friends, we now... Ooh. The imaging is on point. It's not a super wide sound stage, but you're in it. You're not, at, you're not at it. It's not in you. You're in it. And I would really like to test these out with some sort of directional stuff going on and see where things are coming from if I can. Because I'm telling you, this went from one side of a vibraphone to the other, and it shifted sides of my head. How am I inside the vibraphone? 
It's th- like that. That's that's crazy. I'm a tiny little man that somebody stuck inside a, a, a xylophone, a metal xylophone, because it's a vibraphone. But still, I, I, I just wow. That was pretty good. Like just the imaging itself was noteworthy, of uh, for a quite sub two hundred dollar pair of headphones. Like that's that should be a you know these should be three hundred fifty plus for that level of imaging. Probably five hundred. That was crazy. I don't know why I have this down like I'm talking to somebody on it. Okay, so now I'm like Bubba Fett, I guess. Um, so, yeah, I'm not even talking about the sound itself, just the imaging itself and the stage. The staging were okay, these are I, they're not super loud to me, so I'm not, but I'm not, sh- but the detail that I'm hearing is. Interesting, if, if nothing else. I'm hearing little crackly stuff that's, that's, that's obviously artifacts. I picked this track because I know it has artifacting. And when I can hear it, it's a different level of game. This, I can hear the distinct strike of the beater head of the snare separate from the snare resonating. That's the level of definition I'm getting out of these. It's sick. It's uh, like I'm getting too good at picking headphones. I'm, I don't need like these. These I don't know why I would need. You know, I, I, maybe in my life I'll get one four thousand dollar pair of headphones before I die to to under to just prove to myself that it was not worth it. But I do not understand why people need too much more than this at this point. Like if you've, uh, this is crazy. It's it's the tech has become too good for us to be making this big like now we're just making a big deal to be to make a big deal or maybe to push the tech but like like a lot of people have said your ears don't change good headphones from 300 years ago are still good headphones yeah 30 40 years ago are still good headphones they your ears are just not that complicated to be honest with you i mean it's very complicated system that makes it work but but it's it's developed for a very primal environment so they do certain things and we know what those are they help us hunt you know what i mean and and these things are not just hunting, they cooking. Like, they just, they're, they're very, they're, my first initial impression, I'm gonna test these and, and prove myself wrong, hopefully a whole bunch of times, and argue with this, but just kicking, you know, just kicking the mic once, and it's starting right up. Uh, this is a very good first, this, these give a very good first impression. You know what I mean? I'm not testing them a bunch of, against a bunch of other stuff, but I'm, you know, I'm not too sure about the, the mix and what I like them for, because every, every set of headphones is gonna have biases. So that, but to me, that doesn't dictate that it, whether it's a good set or a bad set, it dictates what they're for. And if I don't tend to have that proclivity or that activity or that type of music or that type of musical library, then it's not for me. It's not, it's not one gonna be my primary driver or even a, a weekly driver. So that's what, but here, there's definitely something going on, on the technical end that will do you some justice. Okay, as much as the box was talking that bull, that good, that good, good, I'm not really feeling the bass on these is like, like, I, like I think I should be. There's no slam to it. There's no, there's no, it, 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 it seems rolled off in the bass and it's not as punchy as I would like for, especially for a gaming headset. Because when somebody drops a bomb in a game, you want it to, whoa, whoa, you know what I mean? You want it to affect you. When somebody, you know, when something slams, it should slam. And it doesn't really slam like that. The bass is a bit soft. These are, it seems like the bass is a bit rolled off to me. And I think that a gaming set should be kind of a deep V, but these are kind of a ramp. Um, they, I mean, they're, they're, they seem to be high mid forward and then recessed a bit in the upper highs. Then mids, then bass, then upper highs. You know what I mean? I don't know why I would use these at, for gaming in particular. Um, I think if if you stood these up against like the, uh, the MX300s from Bayer Dynamic, I think I would pick those for gaming more times than not, more than these. But these do have a very good, this is something that, this this sound is something I would listen to classical in or maybe even early jazz and blues. Anything that had that, that sound profile, I think I would, I would definitely push forward. But I think anything under an upright bass is gonna kinda sound weak. So you'd have to come at this with either an amp that just slams, it may need a bigger amp, than I'm, because it's already pushed at its limit. But 
at 28 ohms uh, at 109 dBs, it should it should be slamming harder than this. It's not. So I'm gonna put it into a bigger power amp, and I'm also gonna maybe maybe mess with some EQing. But it's not, I'm gonna try something else with a little more mid, mid lows and lows, but I don't hear a lot of nuance in the lows, and I don't hear a lot of just, just, just like I said, just, just force, just, just. So, one, let's give it one more little run and see what we got. Yeah, at this tuning, we're looking at something that's like for, like if you love Lilith Fair, these are your headphones. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, if, if you like female vocals with acoustic guitar, acoustic electric guitars, you know, this is, this is your jam. I'm going to call these, this pair chalky. They're accurate. The soundscape is decent. The echolocation is, is on point, but they're clinical to a point of, I feel falsely clinical. I feel like there's, 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 it's that, it's this thing that these people do where they, 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 Electric up the, the the headphones. They make them. They they add a little like this false presence uh, by turning up the highs and you know and just uh, it's it's just something they do too much to make them audiophile-y because people who call themselves audiophiles don't like natural sound. You know, people will tell you a thousand times that the most like you know that that the eight hundreds and the six hundreds are the most authentic sounding from a tone standpoint, and then you compare six hundreds to the things that are almost all audiophiles like. And it's just, it's like, it sounds like AM radio to me. Or like when the DJ puts the phase button, it's like, yeah, it's just crazy. So I'm going to give him some, some, some further testing with um, a, definitely I'm going to give him a, a, hard, a harder amp. I'm going to put him on the X Duo and then I'm going to mess with the EQ perhaps, give us some bass slam. But I think, I think, I think they might just jump with, um, I, you know, because the, the hertz range is supposed to be 10 hertz to 30,000, 30, and I'm not hearing 10 hertz. I'm not hearing 30 hertz out of these things, like for real. It's, it sounds really jammed up. And with a mic that's from, that stops at 50 hertz, I'm pretty sure that my voice is going to sound like this when I talk through it, because it's going to have like no undertone series, and I'm going to sound like I'm not going to fall for that, but I of the tailpipe. So, you know, there's that. But, you know, when you're talking in the game or talking on the phone, that's going to get your voice, you know, your message apart across, but you, you're not going to sing into these things and, and get any women on it. So you can kick, kick, you can kick the Barry, White and Barry Might Act. Um, but, you know, they, if, you know, if you are into that classical, Asian music, you know, uh, all of that K-pop, J-pop, you know, and, and any of that stuff, these are your jams. You can definitely pack these in for, you know, less than a buck fifty and listen to use a mark.